the Upanishad series Discipline and Meditation When does discipline become meditation? Someone asked. When your microphone is open, it is open in fact for all the disturbance that comes in. When I keep my microphone on, any kind of disturbance feeds in into the system and reaches each one of you. You remember we are connected to one another. When a disturbance is coming in from your source, it reaches and affects everyone. If a person, the family member is disturbed or tense, this will affect all the other members of the family and the friend circle of whosoever he communicates with. Indeed, discipline never becomes meditation. However, the vice versa is always true. Meditation certainly brings a discipline in your life. Therefore, never begin with discipline. Otherwise, you will never arrive at meditation. You can be disciplined. Discipline is needed for certain other things. When you want to achieve something in life, that time sincerity, discipline and clear vision is necessary. But meditation has nothing to do with the outward life. It has to do with inward. One thing you remember that Every circumstance and situation can be used as a technique, as a vehicle. Life is a journey from one point, point A to point B. If it is depth, then it is from A1 to A2. Inward journey moves in heights, outward journey moves along the horizontal line. And sometimes you have to keep on changing the vehicles to reach from one destination to the other. Relationship becomes a vehicle. It takes you far. It brings an understanding. A circumstance and situation comes. If you are awakened, or if there is seed of awakening growing into you, you can use that particular circumstance and situation to transcend beyond that. This particular situation will become a vehicle to take you beyond or you miss the opportunity. Anything you can use as a vehicle. You are interacting with someone how can you use a particular circumstance and situation as a vehicle? Because you have a fixed idea of a vehicle. Vehicle means that takes you from a destination A to B. You are in a particular state of mind. You are expecting something. And it does not happen near you. Then you are disappointed. 
means you have gone into the river's gear. If at that moment an understanding comes, whatsoever happens, happens for a reason. This reason I may not understand at this moment, but total acceptance of all that is will be for me. Then that particular circumstance and situation, although it is an ayata in the long sequence of the journey, you remember the journey has to be continued in a small segments. You are going from your home city to another city. How does the journey begin? You walk to reach to your garage. This is one segment. Then you ride the vehicle and reach the airport. So the vehicle was the second it covered the second segment. Each segment has its own way of journey. Then again you come out, you walk to reach to the counter. Certain things are done. When you have completed that aspect, you reach to the terminal where you have to board the plane. Another segment of the journey. Like that, all these small segments are there which completes the total journey Then maybe you may have to change the plane at a particular city to reach to the final destination. So if a wise man is the one who makes every circumstance and situation as a vehicle to move from one state to another. And the journey continues. This is meditativeness. This requires awareness, not discipline. Therefore, Discipline never becomes meditation. However, vice versa is true when the meditation attains fruition, your life becomes disciplined. Therefore, never begin with discipline, otherwise you will never arrive at meditation. You start with meditation and your life will be disciplined. And then discipline will not be imposed from outside. Instead, it will be an inner overflow. You will become luminous from within. In fact, to call it a discipline is not right because it is so utterly free. But it's Till you can call it discipline somehow. Your life will be disciplined, not by any effort, not by any rules. When you are working in an office or a part of the society, you are disciplined by the rule. There is a rule that governs your discipline. You have to dress in a particular manner. You have to walk through. All these things are outer dimensions of discipline. When meditation attains to fruition, you are not bound by outer discipline, instead by your own inner understanding. You will behave responsibly not that you have to behave that way. 
you will behave responsibly because a conscious man an aware man can behave only that way because there is no other way for him now there is no other way you will not behave behave for any profit for any motive instead you will behave out of your own spontaneity and deep understanding there will be no greed in it if somebody is a christian saint he is greedy he wants to reach to the christian paradise if someone is a jain monk he is greedy because he is a businessman he is trying to win over by virtue to be virtuous in the other world to become a spiritual conqueror but the idea is that basically of greed and nothing else this continues so if you go and look around the world at monks the saints and your so called spiritual people you will find 90% of them are just greedy and materialistic people in a different garb they are disciplining themselves because they know that if they sacrifice great is going to be the payoff they are ready to sacrifice everything they are ready to sacrifice everything even to kill themselves but it is a bargain again a man of meditation has understanding but there is no motive behind it. there is no bargain with reality how can you bargain with reality with existence with the whole the whole idea of bargain is silly a man of meditation is good because it feels good to be good there is no motive he is virtuous because being virtuous he feels so happy and delighted he loves shares just as a flower shares its fragrance and beauty naturally there is no bargain or the flower does not say that the cost of a smelling me once is 20 cents or 25 cents it has blossomed it has kept whatsoever overflows it is available free when i realized this in the beginning there was a certain rules to be followed when you are publishing the books must there a criteria to have the copyright but then i have to remove it because by the grace of the ultimate the inner flowering has happened it is not my effort and as an outcome of that the fragrance the inner beauty and the fragrance is manifesting in the outer world as silence as well as words although the voice is mine the words and sometimes the punctuation is mine but what makes the choice of the words what makes the modulation of the voice 
is not money. It belongs to the ultimate. It is erroneous to say that it is my copyright. Can a father say that this child is my copyright because it has come out of my own humus? I contributed, you contributed to the body of the child. But body is dead, there is no aliveness until something comes from the beyond. If you are able to bring that beyondness into the words, words will have a different kind of a fragrance. And that comes out of grace, not through your efforts. You are just waiting for that grace to happen. That is Marabba. You are waiting for that grace to happen, the inner harmony, inner fragrance, inner beauty will start assuming the form of words, the gaps between the words and will create a symphony and that symphony we create the proofs into you. So this whole idea of copyright is it does not appeal to me. I am not saying that you should not do. Everyone has to walk on his own feet. Your consciousness is your feet on which you walk. You journey. So when that changes, something will come to you. Whatsoever the words, the, yes, as I said, the punctuation is mine, the choice of words is also the outcome of my inner harmony. If there is disturbance, the words of a different nature will come to you. If something happens astonishingly or something happens, the kind of words that you will use will determine the company, the inner growth that you have. And when there is a change within, your whole choice of the words will change. And that will determine your inner growth. So, when I am speaking, the words are mine, the punctuation is mine, the voice is mine. But that which activates the voice, that which, that which gives a lightness to the voice, is the grace. Is that the totality has descended through this voice. The totality chooses the words, the gaps, creates the music. And that brings an inner discipline. Guided by that inner discipline. So discipline comes as a process of deep understanding. An understanding comes out of meditativeness. His virtue is not cultivated or conditioned. In, instead, it is growth in his being. He is virtuous because being virtuous, he feels so happy, so delighted. He loves, shares, just as a flower shares his fragrance and beauty naturally and spontaneously. 
is still you ask when does discipline become meditation never discipline never becomes meditation however meditation always brings a different kind of discipline and inner discipline and that discipline is because of the freedom that you are is not that you have attained freedom but you are the embodiment of freedom that discipline is not a new prison instead that discipline makes you totally free and liberated you do not have any commandments to follow or anybody or any scripture you simply follow your own inner code i am speaking to you i am not speaking in a hindu perspective or a christian perspective or islamic perspective or using those scriptures i am guided by my own inner scripture i have no commandments to follow or any one or any scripture yes in order to give an understanding to someone who is still lost in the sand in the woods of the scriptures in the woods of so called outer religion i may mention the connection so that he can continue and and then one day he has to leave that also i am guided by my inner code in our understanding the explanations and there is no conflict within you there are no alternatives you are not to choose you do not have to choose to do this or to do that whatsoever arises in your being naturally and spontaneously you do it there is never any repentance because a man of meditation cannot do anything wrong it does not happen and it does not matter whether things happen your way or not things happen the way existence wants this to happen he is doing he is total in whatsoever he is doing total in whatsoever he is doing not even an iota of energy is left in him his whole body emotions the understanding the intelligence is at play in fact his entire being is at play as the words overflow as these create the gaps in between the two worlds thus the symphony flows on he is doing totally next moment he has moved beyond it this very moment when this particular world happened is no more he has moved to the next moment he never looks back he or repents because whatsoever happened has already happened and whatsoever was to happen was to happen and that's why it has happened there is a deep understanding in it and the deep understanding will make you know the reason behind it whatsoever did not happen was not to happen but we go on blaming the other as if the other is the one doing everything we forget we forget that the words can be yours the punctuation can be yours and of course the voice is yours but that aliveness comes from somewhere else there is a wide revolution of fresh 
flowers fresh flowers and you would hear the people saying i like fresh flowers do you understand what does it mean to be a freshness freshness means it is symbolic of aliveness that which is alive is fresh and that which is not is not fresh aliveness means you are connected to your source and connected to the source means the pranavayu the life force the alan white is flowing freely into you when you are connected to the source you are connected to the life force the alan white the pranavayu and when that keeps flowing into you it makes you alive and as the fragrance of that aliveness you are fresh when a flower is cut from its root is no more fresh it's as dead as any other thing and it will putrefy faster because you have completely cut it off from the source and you call it fresh fresh flower and there is a revolution of carrying the fresh flowers for various occasions and a great business takes place but the freshness is the fragrance of being connected to your source you can be a living i use the word living but you may not be alive you may be unconscious a lightness is a part of total understanding and consciousness whatsoever i am is because of somehow or the other this connection is not being discontinuous it remains moment to moment that connection to the electricity grid your electric house is never deprived of the electric current as long as it is connected to the electrical supply outside your house when you are connected outside your micro window to the macro the aliveness remains whatsoever is happening is happening for a reason this is in a way you will recall a sufi summer the singer sings a couplet then he goes all around he takes the various examples and comes back to this main theme that is encompassed in that particular couplet so to somehow the other that strategy is being used in this prosaic expression he is doing totally the next moment he has moved beyond it he never looks back or repents because whatsoever happens has already happened and that was to happen whatever did not happen was not to happen he neither praises himself i did this nor does he feel guilty if i am not responsible for it i have heard a conversation between two singers one singer was well established the other now coming to the fold but she singing sings beautiful she says आपकी आवाज बहुत सुरीली तरीन आवाज है ब्यूटीफुल वॉइस यू हैव मैं तो कुछ भी नहीं आई एम नथिंग दिस इज द आउटकम ऑफ ईगो दिस इज नॉट ह्यूमिलिटी सो ही नेवर प्लेसिस हिमसेल्फ दैट आई डिट 
when I am not responsible for doing this, then how can I be responsible for this not to happen? Only that praises himself, I did this, nor does he feel guilty. Why should I? Why could I not do this? He has no handover. He is clear cut discontinuity with the past. A clear cut discontinuity with the past. Each moment he moves into the unknown. Because future means the unknown and unknowable. Past disappears and he is fresh like the dew drops in the early morning and that freshness is a continuity with the existence, this is the lightness. That discipline is the outcome, is the fragrance of meditation, is the fragrance of inner understanding that has freshness. That discipline has freedom, that discipline has fragrance. Otherwise, discipline makes people dull, stupid, and mediocre. Discipline kills your freedom, your being, and becomes suicidal. So never start with discipline. Instead, start with meditation, with an understanding. And as the fragrance of that, when the discipline comes, it has a totally a different, a different understanding. That discipline has freshness, that discipline has freedom, that discipline has the fragrance, otherwise discipline makes you mediocre. You start with meditation, that is why my so much emphasis is on meditation. If discipline emerges out of your meditation, it is good. Otherwise, it is not needed. You just allow the meditation to happen naturally and spontaneously. Let each circumstance, let each situation, each time when you relate to someone or your relationship, be a vehicle to take your consciousness from one level to another. Life is a journey. Participate into it. Rejoice each moment as it comes.